Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a budget Ryzen 5000 series powered laptop that I recently picked up from Walmart. It's no secret that I personally love these mobile Ryzen chips, especially the 5000 series and the 6000 series. We'll be seeing a lot of those coming out soon. But until then, I've actually been seeing a lot of these budget Ryzen 5000 series laptops, especially with the 5500U, pop up on eBay, Amazon, and Walmart. I picked this up at my local Walmart store for $300. $39 and I've seen it online for $329 up to $399. I wouldn't go with the $400 range with something like this, but at that $330 mark to $350, this might be a really great laptop for some people out there. When it comes down to it, it's definitely a budget laptop. We've got that 15.6 inch 1080p display. It's not the highest quality display out there, but it'll definitely get you by. And in this video, we're going to be testing out some normal laptop usage, web browsing. We're going to do some video playback. I do want to test some gaming on this, I'll run some benchmarks, and we'll test a few emulators by the end of this video. But before we move on any further, I do want to mention that this video is brought to you by URCD Keys. I've actually been using this site for a couple years now. They do offer Steam Keys, Origin, Uplay. They even offer Microsoft applications like Office, but the main reason that I use URCD Keys is for their Windows Keys. Right now, their Windows 10 Pro OEM key is $19.84, but if you use code ETA at checkout, you can get $25 percent off. Now there is one thing to keep in mind. When upgrading your PC using a key like this, you can change your GPU, you can change the RAM, the hard drives, the CPU. The only thing that'll stop this key from working in the future is swapping out the motherboard. I guess Microsoft ties these keys to the motherboard serial number, so if you do swap out your motherboard, this key will no longer work on that PC but they're definitely cheap enough. And another great thing about buying from here is they do accept PayPal. Real quick, I'll show you the activation process. Super simple to do. I just did this build here. I need to activate Windows. I'm gonna head over to my updates and security. We're gonna go to activation. As you can see, I've got Windows 10 Pro, but it's not activated. So I'm gonna change product key. I'm gonna paste it in here. Choose next. Choose activate and Windows is now activated. We're ready to go. So we've got Windows 10 Pro, it's activated. My warning is totally gone and basically that's it. They'll email your code once your payment is processed and that's basically it. If you're interested in picking up cheap Windows 10 keys for your new PC builds, I'll leave a link in the description. When it comes to I.O. on this laptop, over here on the left-hand side, we have two full-size USB 3.0 ports. We also have our power in, and this comes with a 45-watt wall charger. Moving over to the right-hand side, we've got a full-size SD card reader, a 3.5mm audio jack, full-size HDMI, and USB Type-C. This laptop is known as the HP 15 EF 2126 WM. They actually sell two different variants, one with 8 gigabytes of DDR4 and the other one has 16, but both of them do run dual channel and it's user upgradable. It's not soldered to the board, they use SODIMM RAM in this unit. When it comes to the CPU, we've got the Ryzen 5 5500U, 6 cores, 12 threads, base clock of 2.1 gigahertz with a boost up to 4.0. Built-in Radeon 7 graphics up to 1800 megahertz, and these actually can be overclocked with third-party application. This model has that 8 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 3200 megahertz, but remember it is user upgradable and running in dual channel. A 256 gigabyte M.2 SSD, also user upgradable. Built-in AC Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 4.2, a 15.6 inch 1080p display, 41 watt hour battery, and this is running Windows 11 right out of the box. All right, so jumping right into it. Overall, this little Ryzen 5 5500U is a snappy little APU. We've got those built-in Radeon graphics here, six cores, 12 threads, eight gigs of RAM, which isn't a lot nowadays, but if you wanna use this as an everyday desktop, you should be fine with that eight gigs. Getting into higher end gaming, you might wanna upgrade this, but like I mentioned in this video, we will take a look at some gaming performance. Uh, one thing that I've noticed here is this APU is only running at about 25 watts maximum. So what you can do is install something like AMD APU Tuning Utility, take it up to 30 watts. And with the GPU here, let's start a render test. You can actually overclock this to 2000 megahertz. And in this video, the APU is gonna be running at 30 watts, GPU is gonna be running at 2000 megahertz, never run into any issues like this. It's not gonna be that far off from the stock configuration. But I really wanted to get the most out of this little laptop and Unfortunately, when it comes to HP and their Ryzen 5 series, they've got the TDP basically locked down. If we could take this up to around 35, maybe 38 watts, we'd be good to go. 
but the maximum you can go on an HP system like this is 30 watts before it kind of drops back off. But using this as your everyday desktop, not bad at all. We've got the AC Wi-Fi built in, uh, web browsing, email checking, video playback should be good to go. You want to do some light photo editing, some light video editing at 1080p. You shouldn't have any issues at all, even at the stock configuration of 25 watts. But as you can see, everything loads up really quickly. It's not bad at all, and I'm a huge fan of these chips. I mean, it's definitely an upgrade from the Intel Celeron chips that you'll see in some of these really cheap laptops in the $200 range. Now, one thing I did want to check out was just a little bit of 4K video playback. I know we're working at 1080p here. All right, so one second here. Make sure we're at 4K. Stats for nerds. Up here, I have Stats for Nerds running. You can see our drop frames, our viewpoints at 1080, but this is a 4K 60 video streaming from YouTube. And having a few drop frames on the initial load in is normal. Let's let it play out a little bit, but I think we should be good to go, even at this stock TDP configuration on the 5500U. Unfortunately, this laptop does not do video out of USB Type-C, so the way I have this plugged into my game capture is over HDMI. I've got that full-size HDMI port. And as you can see, video playback on this little chip, even 4K60 streaming is going to work out. Not a problem at all for this setup. The next thing I did was run a few benchmarks, so let's go ahead and take a look at those. First on the list, we have Geekbench 5, single core, 1075, multi, 4874. Now in other Lenovo laptops that are very similar to this with the 5500U, I've been able to score higher, but we can actually turn that TDP up higher than 30 watts, so this isn't that bad. Moving over to some GPU benchmarks, we have 3D Mark Wildlife. This is a Vulcan benchmark. Total score, 5,612. And finally, we have Night Raid with an 11,341. Moving over to some PC gaming, we're going to start off light here with the original Skyrim. We're at 720p, medium settings, and it runs it really well. I kind of expected us to get really good performance at 720p with these older titles. Even the Valve Source titles like Half-Life 2, Left 4 Dead 2, Portal, all of those are going to run great on this little machine. There was one game I really wanted to test, which was Forza Horizon 5, but unfortunately we've only got 8 gigs of RAM with this unit, and it does lock up on me. So here we have Street Fighter 5, 720p, low, again, handling it just fine, but we are at 720p, low settings. GTA 5 actually did much better than I thought it would. We're at 720p normal settings, and we got an average of 51 FPS. We're not quite there at 60, but I know that the 5500U can do much better than it is in this little laptop. It really comes down to the way HP has this set up. If you take a look at Afterburner, we're right there at 30 watts, 28 watts, and that CPU just can't get enough power to go up to its maximum clocks. That's really one of the main issues with these Ryzen mobile chips when you can't up that any more than 30 watts. And the final PC game I wanted to test, which I had a feeling wouldn't perform very well, was God of War. We're at low settings, 720p, and we got an average of 26 FPS. It's right there on the edge of running this at a constant 30, but unfortunately we do get those dips. Now it's time to check out a little bit of emulation. First up, we have Dreamcast, and I've got this set to 1080p, but we can go much higher. We've got a lot more to work with when it comes to this emulator. Our screen resolution is only 1920 by 1080, so it's not going to make much of a difference. But when it comes to Dreamcast, this little system can handle everything as long as it's compatible with the emulator itself. Checking out some PSP using the standalone version of PPSSPP. 4X resolution, DirectX 11, I also tested Vulcan, and they're right on par with each other. We've got one of the harder ones to emulate, Chains of Olympus, and as you can see, it's running at a constant 60, getting really great performance with the PSP emulator. And the final one here is PS2 using PCSX2. I've got Gran Turismo 4, 720p, DirectX 11 back in, and it's running really well. I tried to go up to 1080p, but it was just a little too hard on this APU. And there will be some games you do have to drop down to native and maybe turn on a few hacks with the 5500U, especially given that we can only run this up to 30 watts. But PS2 does perform well on this machine. So overall, with a fluctuating price tag between 330 and 400, I'd say right there in the middle would be a sweet spot for something like this if you're looking for a secondary PC. 
When it comes to battery life, they're claiming up to 9 hours of video playback. I could definitely see that. You can expect about 6 hours of web browsing, and when it comes to gaming, it really depends. I mean, you could kill this in an hour and a half, or it could last up to 4 hours, depending on what game you're playing and how hard it is on that GPU and CPU. But in the end, it's really up to you. If you're interested in learning more, maybe picking one of these up, I will leave a few links in the description. If there's anything else you want to see running on this laptop, let me know in the comments below. But that's it for this one, and like always, thanks for watching.